We're down to the Elite Eight, as they call it in American sport, mate. We've got quarterfinals coming. They are Saturday and Sunday. So let us start. Right, before we start going through these individual things, is there anything about this eight that really surprises you? Is there a team? I mean, everyone thinks it's probably Morocco, but, you know, is, there, is, is, is that even that much of a surprise? Uh, well, I think they've been very workmanlike. They've been very efficient. Uh, and I think you've got to be in this day and age. I think the, the era really of teams going there and absolutely getting turned over. I know there's been one or two quite emphatic victories, but uh, I think even uh, teams, if you think away from the international stage, uh, even lower league teams can get so well organised that they can uh, sometimes avoid a pasting against the elite. But Morocco, you're right, does stand out as the big uh, surprise. And I suppose the romance of the World Cup, the fact that this African nation has got there, is quite remarkable. Fantastic victory over Spain and uh, all eyes will be on them. But as you say, the business end of the tournament and uh, the elites hoping that they can become... Uh, champions of the world what a great title to have before we again get into the individual matchups here just a couple of general questions about the style of football being played at this tournament and your thoughts on it now i'm talking to a good man fred de jong who's an ex all white and, and he worked for fifa for a long time he's one of our regular guys as well and he was saying look uh, you know that the 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 whole of the middle of the field it's almost like the field has been narrowed it's so packed with players now the idea of trying to pass your way through and and you know and and be able to break a defense like that is has been almost impossible at this world cup we haven't seen long range strikes. I think South Korea got one. We've seen two free kicks, one from Rashford, one from Mexico but we're not seeing 25 yard shots. We're seeing a lot more where it's almost like the wingers are back and they're taking on fullbacks and trying to create space that way. Have you have you, have you you kind of noticed this as well? Yeah, yeah. no, it is fascinating the tactical uh, strategy that teams are adopting. Yeah, we haven't, uh, I mean there have been some special goals, some great goals in this World Cup um, and, and I suppose the evolution of football and the way that teams play you know, the, the, the inverted uh, wingers and, uh, you know, a right-footed uh, winger playing on the left and, and vice versa. Uh, you know, the, 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 it's been revolutionised the game and that's been reflected uh, at, at international level where, as I said earlier, they're no joke, these uh, teams that were considered the also-rans. They, they're quite cute. They're very clever. Uh, and, and the, you know, they, they've been planning seriously for this. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I think that, um, that the, you know, the... The, the quality of the game and the the, the the goals. I don't know. I still think there's been one or two long range strikes, but maybe maybe not as many. Not not when you think of some of the spectacular efforts that we've seen in the past. But uh, I, I think one of the big frustrations, really, watching football, whether at any level, is in this day and age. If you're organised, you can kind of stifle the life out of a game. You can strangle it. And and what that means is that you don't get the same kind of open, attractive football. I think we've seen it in the knockout stages and we've seen it when games have come to the kind of foot cut and thrust of a team needs to score a goal and they've left themselves vulnerable at the back and then we've seen the game open out. But that's what that's what I as a fan want to see. I want to see an open game, an attractive game. And, and, and the tendency with football these days is just that they have this rigid formation and they can protect the goalkeeper and it ends up being a little bit sterile and a little bit unentertaining, to be honest with you. And I've seen even that at the World Cup. I suppose it's that classic difference between what we used to call European football and I and I go back to the 70s when Liverpool started winning European Cups and they started playing it, which was so kind of anti the English rock and roll emotional style of everybody forward and charging and was just end to end kind of what we called cup tie football. Yeah, it was and uh, great to watch, really. Uh, fantastic to watch. Um, but, uh, and I think rugby's got like that. Yeah, it well. has. You know, it I has, mate. It, totally has. Yep. You know, if you, you think of, of, of uh, sidesteps in rugby, I used to love to see uh, a Gareth Edwards sidestep and, uh, you know, the classic games, the bar bars and, and so on. And you just don't see that kind of, I think, flair really sums yep. it up. Yep. It, uh, the, 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 they're good technicians. And even the teams that haven't got. Uh, even as far as the last 16, have still got good technical players who who can, you know, and they're well-programmed, they're well-coached, uh, but it, it just takes a little bit of the uh, the kind of the, the magic out of yes. it and the, 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 that wow factor. Ronaldo, well, was Ten Hag right all along? And look, and, 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 and I wonder how long we're going to keep talking about this, but I suppose while Portugal are in the World Cup, that we will. Uh, here he is, he gets benched, uh, Ramos comes on and scores three, and then at the end of the game, as all the Portuguese players are celebrating, he wanders back down the 
found the tunnel by himself. I mean, look, he's always going to be a story, if not the story, isn't he? He is, yeah. And apparently today he didn't want to train with the uh, the people who weren't in the team. He wanted to train uh, with those the eleven who played, which says a lot really about the guy. You know, the fact that he's sulking, uh, and it was quite amusing and entertaining really to see him uh, with a kind of half-hearted um, celebration when uh, it, you know Ramos scored his hat trick. He, he was joining in, but uh, it was very muted and. Uh, as you say, that that picture tells a story when he he sort of walks off and that they're all celebrating. But uh, he's had his day, you know. You can't go on forever. He's had his day, and if it's somebody else's turn, well, fair play. You should uh, embrace that. Well, haven't we been lucky? I mean, when you're talking about five World Cups, Andy, I mean, to go back to our youth, no one, I mean, Pelé played in four. He was 17 in 1958. He retired in 1970. He got kicked out of 62 and 66, didn't really play. But that's a 12-year span. I mean, you're talking adding another four years on. Just think about the physicality of this people with all of the matches that they play in between. It's incredible that him and Messi have even turned up at this, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It is. And, uh, and, and, Time waits for no man. You can't, especially this day and age. With uh, all right, if you think of Stanley Matthews who played so yeah, what, right, 50, yeah, yeah, you, know, you know, you can get away with it in that era, but you can't uh, in this day and age when fitness and physique and uh, and uh, it counts so much. I think it's just so difficult really to keep pace. Fair play to Ronaldo because of his his regime in terms of his diet and the way that he's looked after his body, his conditioning. Uh, that has given him that longevity in the game. And I admire him for that. I think a lot of people do. But I just think he's tarnishing that uh, image and that memory, really, where the way he's conducted himself and this strop. You know, and people are saying, well, could it be Ronaldo and Messi walking out side by side as captains of uh, Brazil and Portugal in the final? It's not a million miles from a possibility. But, uh, you know, that, that kind of image, uh, you know, you saw the cameras that were trained on Ronaldo when he's on the mm, bench. I thought mm. it was bizarre. That the Portuguese national anthem has been played and the camera cuts from the, the 11 who are playing towards the guy who sat on the substitutes bench. I've never seen it during the uh, national anthems at this World Cup where they've, they've focused on the substitute and you just saw the, the huge bank of photographers which shows the kind of uh, uh, star and the, the circus that surrounds Ronaldo. He probably would have loved it because the, 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 the lenses are trained on him. But... Uh, and, and if it were a Portugal Argentina final, then FIFA, the world of football at large, would say, "Oh, Messi and Ronaldo side by side walking out." But there's a scenario where really it could be Messi, but it might not be Ronaldo. And uh, the manager, fair play to him, he doesn't mess about. If he's in, if he doesn't want him in the team, as he showed last night, he ain't in the team. And, uh, and his, his selection, brave one last night, was fully justified. Andy Buckley, BBC Talk Sport out of England for us. We're talking uh, about the World Cup and the quarterfinals coming up this weekend. A quick question before we finally get to go through uh, those individual games. Um, that, look, I think that's probably as much a reflection of the, the social media influence now on our world and, 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 the, and the clickbait headlines and the fact that everything is so 30-second attention span, Instagram and so forth, and that, you know, here we are about to watch a game of football, and yet, as you said, there's a bank of photographers around him because all their editors are screaming at them that they want the shot because if they put him up there, they are going to get the click. I mean, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's mad. It's bloody mad is what it is, isn't it? It is, yeah, it is. But here's a guy who's got what half a billion. Um, he did that Twitter followers or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, yeah. he's got Instagram followers. He got half a billion, and I think Piers Morgan asked him a very good question. He just said, "Have he got more money or more uh, more pounds in the bank or more Instagram followers?" And Ronaldo couldn't justify that. He couldn't really answer the question. He didn't know whether he got half a billion pound in the bank or 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 more Instagram followers, and which, which says it all. Um, and it's the global brand, isn't it? Um, which David Beckham, you know, who's uh, carrying out the propaganda for Qatar. He nipped over to New York for the Earth Summit last week, and then he was with the England. He's back with the England squad, and the papers today are full of a picture of Saka, Bakayo Saka from Arsenal, who rather sheepishly and uh, uh, rather shyly said, "Can I have a picture taken with you?" You know, he was his idol, and he's, he's brand Beckham yet again. So. You know, and the Ronaldo factor, the Beckham factor, is just a sign of the times of, of that football really has lost its innocence. As I'm speaking to you, I'm watching a game, Stockport County versus Charlton Athletic in the FA Cup, 
second round replay, you know, and there's a really good crowd at Edgeley Park in Stockport. It's a freezing cold night in Manchester this evening. And uh, but that's the, that really, like you and me, that's the true purest football, really. And that's what a lot of people who don't get swept along with the Ronaldo bandwagon. There's an awful lot of people who just like to go and watch a good old fashion game of footy, however you describe it. And, uh, you know, blood and thunder. Uh, and we're blessed in England. We've got so many layers to the, the pyramid of our football that, uh, you know, two teams, uh, Stockport County, that are in League Two are playing Charlton Athletic. And, you know, to them, their passion is there. And whether it's on a parks pitch in New Zealand or whatever. And, and really, there's a lot of people who realise that there's more to life than whether Ronaldo gets uh, clicks on social media and wherever his next million is going to come from. One after the other, then let's go through. Croatia, Brazil to start with. I mean, I, look, I don't know a single person in the world who who isn't Croatian or of Croatian descent who's actually genuinely going to believe that they can beat Brazil. Is it is is, is this one the rubber stamp job? Uh, I think we've got to be, give uh, Croatia a bit more credit. But I, I tend to think that Modric, uh, his legs aren't going to go on forever. Uh, and um, although he's had a great career, yeah, I think Brazil, who've um, starting to warm up, um, and I, yeah, I think Brazil, I, I think Brazil will go through. Um, saw a picture of Gabriel Jesus hobbling on crutches out of the hospital, uh, recovering from uh, his knee injury. He's not going to take any further part in the World Cup, and that's the fickle nature of football, I suppose. You're one injury away, aren't you? But uh, yeah, I think Brazil will go through. How impressed are you with them organisationally? I mean, it's they're difficult to get the ball off. They lost that game to Cameroon, but uh, outside of that, they, they haven't looked like they're going to lose any of their games yet. No, they haven't. But uh, I think so far there's been a, a bit of... Uh, and I know one or two people might disagree when you've got people like Manuel Neuer, the German goalkeeper, you've got Kevin De Bruyne and Lewandowski who are all at home like us watching it on television. Uh, there hasn't. But what I'm trying to say is that there hasn't been uh, the the... We've had the odd shock, but I think we expected Brazil to get this far and uh, we'll now see how good a team they are. I think they'll go through against Croatia, but um, you know, for them, that's the minimum expectation, as it is for most of the teams, really, who are now, even for, including England as well, that was the minimum. Get to the quarterfinal and then let's see what you're made of. Holland versus Argentina in so much history with the World Cup with, with this. Uh, this is a really tasty looking fixture, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, hard to predict as well. Probably, I think Argentina would shade it. Uh, I think uh, the Netherlands have done well. Um, and I think if they go out of this stage, it wouldn't be considered to be uh, a bad World Cup for them. But uh, I think they're looking to... Oh, they didn't qualify for the last one, did they? So no. they're looking to think, well, let's recapture some of the glory days. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it's a fascinating battle this because I don't think Argentina are quite as good as people are making out, uh, and I don't think Holland actually. Are. I can't see either of these teams winning the World Cup. I might be proved wrong, but I can't see either of them winning it. Have you detected a real nervousness ar around the way that Argentina play? They really need a goal to settle down, and Messi seems to be the only guy that's actually going to do that for them. They just they just seem to me that they just they they are wobbly if you can get to them. Yeah, they are. They are. And uh, a lot been made about the fans and the passion of the supporters. Fair enough, great that they've got a huge following in Qatar. But uh, yeah, I, I just think Argentina. I mean, what is it building up towards an Argentina Brazil potentially semi final? Um, and uh, you know, Brazil, I would have thought, would probably come out on top on that. But the Netherlands will be thinking that they've, they fancy the chances against Argentina, so I wouldn't rule it out. I would not rule out. The Netherlands coming good against Argentina, but yeah, I do agree with you. I think they're the the they've kind of a bit underwhelming at the moment. Argentina, messy aside. Andy Buckley is with us, BBC Talk Sport out of England. Couple of quarterfinals to to do. Then Morocco, as we spoke earlier, versus Portugal. Uh, there's real romance attached to Morocco. Interesting, isn't it? Also, that you've got five European sides, two from South America and one uh, from Africa. And I suppose you know we normally expect one from Africa or one from Asia. But again, Europe's dominating, even though Europe doesn't get you know, the amount of places that perhaps Europe should get because of the, the quality of the teams. Portugal, though. I mean, they're either so outstanding that they're going to repeat that or that's the best performance that they're going to put together in the World Cup. Which one is it? Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I'd like to think that uh, Portugal um, will, uh, I don't know, I quite fancy them. I think that they've got a good chance. And I think that 
they've also the fact that now Ronaldo's out of the team. There's probably you know if you think of Ramos last night, if Ronaldo had been in the team, then uh, they're all thinking oh, I've got to pass to Ronaldo, and they're all in fear of him. And by really by getting him out of the team, the managers turn around and say, well look guys, you're good players. They are good players. Bernardo Silva, uh, Bruno Fernandez, they've got a great team really. So just go out and and he's taken out that kind of X factor of Ronaldo and and deliver and they are capable of delivering. So I think Portugal uh, would fancy their chances in this tournament as things stand at the moment. Finally, England, England, is it coming home, mate? Can you get past France? Yes, is the short answer to that. Um, Carl Walker appeared at the news conference today uh, and uh, was talking confidently about his chances of containing Kylian uh, Mbappé and you know we're not going to roll over and just let him score and beat us he's got a good record against Mbappé and England if you think about it from a tactical point of view for all the faults the pretty well organized England um and the played uh, the come up these players have come up against Mbappé before so let's not just fall for all the the hype and think oh the hysteria that's surrounded Mbappé Pogba's not there for France which is probably a good thing he's another ego that's uh, not landed in Qatar. Well, he has. He, he hasn't landed, but uh, Ronaldo's uh, ego has landed in Qatar. It might be on its way out sooner rather than later. Cristiano Ronaldo have no fixed abode at the moment. But um, yeah, I, I I think England have got a very good chance. The the view here is that we it could go either way, and uh, I think that's a fair, uh, not neutral uh, perspective on it, but it's a realistic take on the fact that England could win and they could lose. Final question for you then is penalties. Andy, you know, you've watched football, you've played football, I'm sure your kids have played football. Good God. You know, if, if, if that ball came to you in the penalty spot in the course of a game and you had an open goal, you would never side foot it in. You would blast the hell out of that thing to get it in. Why do people fanny these penalties like this? I don't know. I don't know. Don't, um, can't unbelieve it. Um, they're just trying to be clever, aren't they? They're just trying to be... Uh, smart and thinking, oh, I can outwit. And you've got to be the best, really. Messi's missed a lot of penalties in his career. He's missed penalties at this this World Cup. Uh, I have actually, just to, I'm not blowing my own trumpet here, but I have scored two penalties in front of a crowd of 22,000 people. And you're going to say, well, hang on a minute, what's all that about? I played in a half-time celebrity penalty shootout, Manchester City against Manchester United in the mid-90s at May Road, the crowd was 23,000. It was a testimonial for a guy called Paul Lake, who sadly had to end his career because of injury. And I worked for the BBC at that time, and uh, I got to take two penalties against Manchester City's, I think it was a youth team keeper, and I scored them both. And I did exactly what you just said. I just belted them, and they both went in. And not, none of this trying to side foot and outwit him and look him in the eyes and think, oh, he's going that way, I'm going to do it that way. I just absolutely smacked them and they both went in. So uh, I'm not exactly speaking from a position of uh, authority, but um, as somebody who's been there and done that. But uh, yeah, I just, just I share your view. Just absolutely smack it. I could think of another word, but I won't because um, it's a family show. Uh, but just absolutely uh, drill it and take your chances that way. You might as well do that because if you're going to try roll it in and uh, try and beat somebody, then uh, I think you're, you're, you're asking for, for trouble.